Hello everyone, welcome to the video on bootstrap emitter for lawyer circuit. Yes, in the last videos, uh, I explained about the Darlington emitter for lawyer. Darlington emitter for lawyer circuit and bootstrap emitter for lawyer circuits. These two circuits come under high input resistance transistor circuits. We know the CC amplifier is having high input impedance, but why are going for this uh, uh, Darlington emitter for lawyer circuit or bootstrap emitter for lawyer circuit? What is the reason? I will explain here. See, uh, first I will see the CC amplifier. This is the base uh, terminal, emitter terminal and collector terminal. Okay, when we are analyzing this amplifier, I will use uh, that approximate H-parameter model. Yes, if you draw the approximate H-parameter model for this base, yes, output is emitter and this is collector. Fine. So, between base and emitter, HIE, between collector and emitter, we have HFEIB like this. Now, by doing IC analysis, VCC must be 0. So, when VCC is 0, R1 other end is grounded. So, instead of grounding here, you can ground R1 here. This is all ground. So, now, yes, at base, R2 and R1 comes in parallel. So, this is R2 and this is R1. Okay. So, now, just I am explaining only about input impedance. Yes, this is Ri. Okay. And after this, you have Ri dash. And you know the rest of the circuit is simply Rs and Vs. This is the circuit. Okay. Then what is Ri for CC? Yes, we know Ri for CC is Yes, I have given you the table HIE plus 1 plus HFE into RD. Okay, now what is RI dash? RI in parallel with R1 in parallel with R2. Okay, this HIE plus 1 plus HFE into RE is very high. Okay, this RI is very high which is in parallel with R1 in parallel with R2. These resistors R1 and R2 or Lower, very lower than the input impedance. So, what is happening to their parallel combination? Their parallel combination becomes low. Fine. Then, very high value of resistance in parallel with low value of resistance gives low value. Okay. Okay. So, what is happening? Actually, the input impedance is very high, but because of the biasing resistors R1 and R2, the input impedance is becoming very low. So, we can't use a CC for high impedance applications. So, what you have to do? You have to remove this R1 and R2. Okay, then, yes, the input impedance becomes Ri which is very high. But what is the problem when you remove R1 and R2? R1 and R2 resistors act as biasing resistors. So, if you remove R1 and R2, biasing of the transistor will be changed. Means the operating point, they will move to either cutoff or to the saturation. So, your circuit won't work like amplifier. Okay. So, that is the reason you have to keep the resistors R1 and R. At the same time, you have to maintain the input impedance of very high value. So, now I will explain bootstrap emitter following circuit which has an alternative for this high impedance CC amplifier. Okay. This is the bootstrap emitter following circuit. You know uh, the emitter follower circuit, emitter follower circuit is the other name for common collector amplifier. Okay, then so the emitter follower circuit. The difference between this circuit and the previous circuit, the previous CC amplifier is at R1 and R2 center is connected at base. Okay, this is base, emitter and collector. So here, what is the circuit? R1, R2 center is this and to the center R3 resistor is connected. R3 other end is connected at base. That's all. Then another thing is between this node and the emitter there is a okay. So now what is happening? So now what I am going to prove? I am going to prove that this boost of emitter follower circuit is having high input impedance as well as good biasing. Okay. So now coming to the DC operation. 
Okay. So for DC case, we know all the capacitors are open. Okay. This is, so what will happen when the capacitor, when this capacitor is open? So when this capacitor is open, see this, this capacitor is also open. Uh, because this is DC analysis, no need of this, only VCC is enough. Yes, now, when it is open, this gets disconnected. When it is open, imagine the circuit when it is open. Yes, yes, this is also open. Now, R1 and R2, their center is connected to R3, R3 is connected to base. So, what is happening? We are getting biasing by the resistors R1, R2 and R3. There R1, R2 center is connected to base. Here R1, R2 center is connected to R3 and R3 other end is connected to base. Totally the three resistors are connected at base only. So the, these three resistors works like biasing resistors for this circuit. Okay. So in R2 and R3, yes, fix the biasing. Fine. Now, I'll resume the circuit. Okay. So, now we'll move to the AC operation. So, what happens to the capacitors? Capacitors become short-circuited. This is short. And this is also shorter. Fine. Okay, this is okay. Fine, that is uh, zero. Yes, now. When the C gets shorted, okay, so what is happening to R3? R3, one end is at base and other end is at emitter. Because C is shorted, remember, okay. So R3, one end is at base and another end is at emitter. So what is this uh, base? Base is input terminal and emitter is output terminal, okay. So your R3 resistor is between input and output. Okay. So, if there is any common resistor for input and output, to separate that effect for input and output, to separate it for input side and output side, we have the concept called Miller's theorem. Okay. So, now, yes, to separate R3, okay, use Miller's theorem. Okay. Now, according to the Miller's theorem, at the input side, connect a resistor, let it be Rm1, okay, which is equivalent to R3 by 1 minus AD, okay. Then, output side, connect a resistor Rm2, which is AV into R3 by AV minus 1. What is AV? AV is... Voltage gain V0 by VI. Okay. So now, uh, for an example, as I want to prove the circuit is having high input impedance as well as good biasing. I already proved that it exists good biasing. Now, to, I want to prove it gives high input impedance. So for that, I will take uh, the, the values R3 as 200 kilo ohm and as this is CC configuration, the voltage gain approaches to 1, let it be 0 0.99. So, what is happening to Rm1 if you substitute these two values? It becomes and it becomes approximately 20 mega ohm. Okay. So, 20 mega ohm resistance means it is very high. Okay. So, now we will connect this Rm1 and Rm2 in our circuit. Okay. I am just removing this R3. Remember, this short is for C, the capacitor C. Because of this short only, this R3 is, seems to be connected between base and emitter. Okay, so R3, you have to disconnect R3, a common R3, and you have to separate it like RM1 and RM2. But you should not remove this uh, capacitor short. Okay, so now I will connect. Yes, Rm1 here and I will connect. Yes. Okay, so in this way you have to connect the Miller's resistors Rm1 and Rm2. Okay, so now base exactly you have 
the resistance, input resistance Ri and after Rm1, you are the input resistance Ri dash. Okay, so now see, uh, what is Ri? Ri is the input resistance for common collector. So what is it? Hia plus 1 plus Hfe into Rd. Okay, which is very high, we know it. Okay, now what is Ri dash? Ri in parallel with Rm1. Am I correct? Ri in parallel with Rm1. Okay, so now I will clarify one point. Now, at the base, you have only two resistors. One is its internal input resistance. Okay, we can't see it physically. Another one is to the base only Rm1 is connected. Fine. Now the total input impedance becomes this internal resistance in parallel with Rm1. Remember that point. Okay. But what is happening to R1 and R2? See the connection R1. The point is here. This point is nothing but this emitter. Because this is connected to emitter. So now when you make VCC is equal to 0. Yes, R1 other end is grounded, means this side it will come. Suppose, yes, I will remove this uh, part. Yes, I will make, uh, for eliminating the confusion, I will make the CC there. But, I have to connect this R1 here. Am I correct? So, where these two resistors are connected? At emitter. Okay. So now, what is the emitter resistance RE, which is nothing but load? Now, if you see, R1, R2, RE, RM2. These four resistors are connected at emitter. Which these four becomes the load for this circuit. Okay, so, yes, I will clarify that. RL effective. What is the load actually? RE. And effective load means RE. N parallel with R1, N parallel with R2, N parallel with Rm2. Fine. So, R1 and R2 resistors are not at base now. Those are at emitter means output. Okay. So, now coming to our input resistance. Original internal input resistance is Hie plus 1 plus Hfe into Re is very high. And what is Re dash? Re in parallel with Rm1. See Rm1. Rm1 is 20 mega ohm. It is. Very, very high. Okay. So, now see this. Ri, it is very high. Ra is very high. Rm1 is very, very high. So, what is the result? The result is very high. And actually speaking, it is somewhat greater than Ri. Okay. But not Rm1. It is definitely greater than Ri. RA is already very high. Now we proved that this bootstrap emitter follow your circuit is having high input impedance. Okay, here I want to clarify one point. High value of resistance in parallel with low value of resistance is equal to low value of resistance. In the same way here, very high value of resistance in parallel with very very high value of resistance. The answer is, yes the answer is lowest of these two. What is the lowest of these two Ri, which is very high? Okay, so we preserve the concept of good biasing and also the concept of high input impedance with this bootstrap emitter follow your circuit. Okay, this is about the bootstrap emitter follow your circuit. Okay, thank you very much.